Good morning, folks. Welcome to Chip Break 15. It is Friday morning. We did a video YouTube uh, help session with Tim Schmoyer from Video Creators. And we've done a couple of these before. Uh, this was our first one with Tim, and it was really great. He gives us a lot of good, or he gave us a lot of good feedback on our uh, YouTube channel and content and message. And it really made me um, think about what is our goal and what do we what am I trying to do with this channel? Why do I do it? Really, really distill it down to the core. And it was perfect timing because this morning uh, I got an email from a fellow named Sam Baumgarten. Uh, yeah, Baumgarten, which is tree farm in German, I believe. And Sam sent over a link to with some photos and a YouTube video. There's a card here for the YouTube video. Take a look, folks. Sam is a high school senior, just graduated. He built a 3D printed and machined Arduino wireless glove with flex sensors that control the fingers. And you can watch it in this YouTube video and you can see it run. And this is, this is it folks. This is why I do what I do. I know our channel has become a sort of machining focused channel, but for me, it wasn't, machining was just part of it. It was also the Arduino stuff, which as an aside, um, I'm getting my electronics bench set back up and I'm, I'm really, I'm really excited to get back into to kind of kind of coming full circle because I'm not the best machinist. I love machining. Um, it uses computerized equipment, which is kind of what I love anyways, but that's what I like. This project is awesome. And I asked Sam, I said, hey, and I was I tried to be un unbiased. I said, this is awesome. Uh, would you mind if I shared this? And then I said, um, was our channel or others influential at all? You know, did it help learning, passion? You know, have your colleagues been influenced by it? And Sam's response was, was great, and I want to read a little bit uh, from it. He says, yep, YouTube has served a few different purposes. It's acted as an inspiration when I see people doing these cool things. I want to do these cool things. It's acted as a way for me to find things I don't know. Uh, oftentimes, I don't know enough to know what I don't know. Totally. This is where I, you know, sometimes it's frustrating because uh, you don't, like, I remember when I was testing out CAD software, and so folks were like, oh, you just need to try it and use it. And this is when I was brand new. And I was like, that's like asking a person who's never operated a motor vehicle to tell which race car they like better. What, what do you, what? Um, even though most of the time I don't get everything from videos, they give me the terms to look up or tech techniques to experiment with, especially channels for people like Tom Lipton, just show me how much I don't understand. Another way I've used YouTube as a way to machine without equipment. I don't have a shop at home, so I do my machining at school. So when I'm at home, I like watching people learn from their mistakes, so I don't make them as quite as many. Um, you know, watching people get new equipment is inspiring. One of the machines we have is an old Bridgeport. I've learned a lot about tearing them down and restoring them. There have been a few people that I've worked with that turned to YouTube, but not as many as he hopes. I've noticed that people trying to absorb as much knowledge as they can are the ones that I enjoy working with and the ones who actually get things done because they are so motivated. I don't know if Sam knows it, but he's he is turning himself on to some really important life lessons and business lessons, which is um, I went to Babson College. It's the number one school in the country for entrepreneurship. And there's a thing in their entrepreneurship program called ORT, O-R-T, Opportunity, Resource, and Team. And you've got to build those three things to be successful in a business, especially in entrepreneurial pursuit. And most venture capitalists will tell you they are they care more about the resources and the team, especially the team, then they do the opportunity. In other words, they would invest in a B or B plus opportunity with an A level team versus an A or A plus opportunity with a mediocre team. Sam is realizing, he, he's got this filter about realizing who he wants to surround himself with. Folks, that is huge. Um, he also is realizing he, he wants to be around people that get stuff done, L love it. Um, Sam continues, I was on a robotics team and we were not pushing our machines as hard and our end mills got dull. I used the NYC videos to, on fees and feeds to convince people that running the machines slowly wasn't safe. So that's awesome. Not only did Sam um, recognize the problem, but he had to put on his sales hat and convince other people, which is another good little lesson, which is I don't care what you're doing in life, you are always selling. Right now, I am selling myself to you guys. I'm selling you that my time or your time is worth watching my videos. You're always selling. Um, to sum it up, what I said in less words, I use YouTube all the time. It's what's helped me become a better machinist and I wish more people use it as a resource because it's so valuable. Um, he also goes on to mention how helpful the Haas channel has been, which is awesome. So folks, there's two things I want you to take away from this. One, 
S Sam, nice job. Um, he's, or sorry, the two things are one, um, it's not always the present, it's the future that matters. So for me, I put so much time into our YouTube videos in the present because it works for us, but also I'm taking a risk. I'm taking a bet that YouTube is going to be bigger. You know, when I hear companies like Google that own YouTube say they want to replace uh, cable TV, that catches my eye. And that comes full circle back to what I want to do, which is the YouTube channel for me, I, th I think, is my one chance to change the world. I'm not going to change the world with our job shop and even with our training classes, you know, smaller impact with the training classes because that's one at a time in person. But for me, the YouTube channel is the chance to change the world. Even right now, we're a tiny channel. I think we're the 23,000th smallest YouTube channel. But every hour of every day, 100 hours of our videos are watched. That's pretty crazy, right? Um, and you get people like Sam, and, and, and we've had, I wouldn't say hundreds, but dozens of folks email us and say, you've influenced our um, high school, our grade school, our college choices, our life choices, awesome. Here's the other thing, and this is where I think I'm a little bit different. I don't, you, you, you guys, when you identify a passion um, or, yeah, a passion, something that you want to become your vocation, that's great, but I do not have any sympathy if you don't have the mindset of also figuring out how to make that work for you lifestyle and financially. I don't care whether it's machining or music or fine arts, uh, whatever your passion is, that's great, but you have to be realistic. It's just like we talked about in the last chipper. You have to be honest with yourself. Can I make a living, put food on the table, support a family? And, and for me, I need to do all those things, but I'll be honest, guys, I, I don't wanna make a little bit of money. I wanna make a lot of money. I wanna be really successful, both because um, actually, it's funny, mostly because I've always viewed money not as something I need to be happy, but because it's a sign of true success. That's a nuance I know, um, but I don't, you know, trust me, having nice things is, can be fun, but it's not, it isn't what makes you happy. That's a whole other good chip break right there on um, does money make you happy. But what it is, undoubtedly, is a sign that you've succeeded. So um, I would encourage, for any of you out there that are at a day job or in high school or college, if you're passionate about something, that is key, but you have to figure out how you can make money with it. And uh, we, we, we spent a two, two or three years at our day job before I put together enough comfort level and a business approach that I could feel like I could go full time. Um, so let's talk about that more in a future chip break, but uh, here's a link again to Sam's video, or it's in the, actually, we'll put it in the video description. Um, we also had some folks asking about our summer intern so i'm going to paste in a clip i had to film it yesterday because the parts that i wanted to show uh, got picked up um, so i also wanted to say thanks again to tim schmoyer tim's point on our chip break series was keep them focused on one topic john and so that's what we tried to do today aside from uh clipping in the intern thing here take care folks have a good weekend I'll see you next week some folks were asking what we were expecting of our intern and, and more about what that uh some folks had asked, tell us more about the summer intern you just hired. So I realized we need more help around the shop. We, we just do. And some of that relates to the basic stuff that, that needs to get done from cleaning to packaging to assembling to tending the machines um, to even helping Jared that frees me up from having to help Jared, you know, if we got to lift something or whatever. So I reached out to the local high school. I'm, I sit on their advisory panel for their curriculum and said, hey, does this make sense? You know, is there a good fit? Is there a good kid? that makes sense to come here for the summer. And the fellow said, I, uh, instructor said, I've got someone in mind. And so I met with him and he, uh, he showed up on time. He was, um, wasn't as enthusiastic as I thought he might be about uh, a job or machining, but he also was, um, you can read somebody. He didn't, wasn't trying to impress me, which is kind of goes back to yesterday's chip break about being honest and not trying to put on a facade. And we've, he's only worked here for three days, I'm very impressed. Um, he is very mature, very mature. He is, I believe, 17 years old. He's between a junior and senior year in high school. And he listens. He's very, seems to be pretty attentive to detail. He has a ton to learn, but he, you know, he, he gets it. He was using thread wires and, and a micrometer and he was, he was doing it right. He had a calculator. Um, he's picked up Fusion incredibly fast. I pre-recorded a video for him 
and had him working on some parts. Actually, it was perfect. We had a really simple job come in uh, for a couple of these. I mean, couldn't get, in some respects, more simple, but hey, there's some facing, some coordinate system setups, um, you know, modeling your stock correctly, adaptive contours, and he did it. Great, Jared helped him. Um, but what really struck me that I was really impressed about is these pins. Customer came in, really interesting actually. Apparently it's, um, and don't quote me on this, I guess a 1929 Pontiac? Does that sound right? That's really old. And instead of a normal car that has on your rotor or brake or whatever, you've got studs. And then you put the tire, push the tire over the studs, and then you put a nut on it. Well, this has the, uh, a fastener, so there's nothing to hang the tire on to to let it sit there while you get the nuts on there. So the fellow asked, um, I feel like I mentioned this the other day. If I did, I'm sorry, duplicating myself. But the parts are done, and they, I think they turned out great. He wanted a stud that would thread in there that he could just drape the tire over, put in you know two, three, or four of the other fasteners, and then pull this out and put the last one in. Totally makes sense. So 5 eighths by 18 thread, 10 18, turned great and then threw him in the mill and did a hex pattern and i know jared helped him with some of the setup on the hex pattern i had to help out a little with the speeds and feeds to get that nailed down but he ran the second one totally by himself i was really impressed he remembered things like when you index the stock out and face it off in the lathe to set your z0 uh, just really uh you know really exceeded my expectations which is which is great because that's a good problem to have it makes me feel a little guilty because there's also work that needs done. I need someone to spend 10 minutes, 20 minutes sweeping up every day. You, you've got to do run little errands or, or package up stuff or break down boxes. It's got to happen. I sh probably shouldn't feel guilty about that, but it's also really, really exciting to see somebody, um, you know, who understands and it seems to be good at this. So I just wanted to share that.